So guys, this is continuation of ethical theories. Now, just as a recap, pag sinabi kong theory, applicable to all or applicable in some instances only. Pag sinabi kong theory, applicable nga ba in all instances or some instances lamang? Tagot? Sige na. <laughs> okay? Some instances lamang. Ha? So bakit ko po ulit-ulit na in-emphasize yan, guys? Kasi pag sinabi nating theory, we are learning here the ethical theory, it does not mean na kapag itong theory na to applicable sa case na ganito, sa lahat ng cases, iti-treat mo ng ganyan. Hindi po ganyan. Ha? So take note, we are learning theories, we are not learning laws. When I talk about laws, guys, your laws are applicable to everything. So for example, your law of gravity, that of Newton. So kahit anong object dito sa Earth, walang exception. no? So lahat po sila napupull down ng gravity. So those are examples of law. But what we are learning right now is theories. Now, prior to this discussion, there are two major theories that we talk about. You have your deontology and then you have your teleology. So you have your deontology and then you have your teleology. Pag titingnan ko itong dalawa, A and B, Sinong nagsasabi na what's more important is your duty to do good? Who's telling us that what's more important is your duty to do good? Is it A or B? Answers on chat, please. Sinong nagsasabi sa dalawa that it is your duty to do good? Is it your deontology or teleology? Answers on chat, guys. Kailangan nyo yan for your participation. Sige na. Okay? Mm -hmm. Others? Okay, that will be your deontology. Ha? Tandaan. So, deontology. Now, if I will say, these are the theories that believe that the means justifies the end. Again, the means justify the end. Ano po yung theory na nagsasabi na the means justify the end? Okay? Mm-hmm. Porket deontology kanina, hindi na pwedeng ulitin yung sagot. <laughs> the means justifies the end. In other words, plus yung pamamaraan mo yung mahalaga, hindi po kung ano yung dulo, pero yung mahalaga, yung pamamaraan po natin. Hey students, that goes back to your deontology. Ha? That goes back to your deontology. So pag sinabi kong means class ways, paano mo ginawa? What are the actions that you did? What was your duty as a nurse? So class, this all goes back to your deontology. Uh, it all goes back to your deontology. That's the message of deontology. It talks about means, ways, actions, and duty. So wala po siyang paki sa outcome. Now, pag sinabi ko namang outcome, focused on outcome, is it your deontology or teleology? Is it your deontology or teleology? outcome, yung focus niya. Anong theories po yan? Deontology nga ba or teleology? So that now class is focus is your teleology. Sinulat ko naman yung letter B. No? Okay, class, pag sinabi ko pong outcome, ang focus po niya is that is your teleology. Ha? Basta outcome class, it talks about teleology. Okay? Ganito lang yan guys yung isipin nyo. No? Alimbawa, no? action, action, action. Maraming action. Itong action po natin, may magiging result po ito. Now, when you focus on the result, what is it? Is it teleology or deontology? Pag ang focus ko result, ano po yan? Teleology or deontology? Okay, yan po ay teleology. Pag ang focus ko result, that will be your teleology. Now, pag ang focus ko naman is kung ano yung act, that would be deontology. Now, let's give extreme examples. Ha? Let's give extreme examples. Halimbawa, okay, let's picture Jose. Sorry kung may Jose dito. Si Jose po ay isang binatilyo na nakatira sa Pilipinas. Si Jose po ay nagnakaw ng pera. Ang purpose ni Jose sa pagnakaw ng pera is that gusto niyang ibigay sa charity ang pera yon. Binigay ni Jose sa charity yung pera. What theory would justify his action? Again, Jose still stole some money and then he donated this to the charity. What would justify his act as ethical? Mm -hmm. Isipin nyo. Okay? Nagnakaw siya, binigay niya sa charity. Ano yung makakapag-justify ng act niya? Is it your deontology or teleology? Ano bang mabuting ginawa niya? Ang pagnakaw or pagbigay sa charity? Di ba yung pagbigay sa charity? 
So since class na, okay, since the good act is yung pagbigay sa charity, we are looking at the result. We are looking at the ends. So if you would look at it, his actions can be somehow justified by teleology. Because sabi ng teleology, kahit ano pang ginawa mo, basta yung outcome naging mabuti, go ahead, do it. Okay? So somehow, in exaggeration, it justifies na, oh, nagnakaw siya pero binigay niya sa charity, ibig sabihin mabuting tao siya. Okay? That's your teleology. Now, for example, I will say, let's do good to a person. Let's do good to a person because that is my duty as a nurse. What is this? Is this deontology or teleology? Kahit anong mangyari, dapat gawin ko if what's best for my patient because it is my duty as a nurse. That would be your deontology. Okay, tama. You're talking about, you're talking about the act. No? You're talking about the act. Okay? So that's an example of your deontology. Okay? Now, class, ha, huwag yung sabihin na, ah, sir, mamaya magnanakaw na ako kasi bibili ko naman ng tinapay. Huwag yung gamiting justification yun sa mga parents nyo. Ha? Baka batukan ko kayo mamaya. Okay? I'm just giving to you examples no, in the real world setting. Now, if you are a nurse, let's say, for example, no, yung pasyente natin is sleeping. Let's picture another Jose. Matandang Jose na to. 50-year-old male. This Jose was admitted. Tapos, this Jose is bedridden. Pag sinabi kong bedridden class, hindi na, naka, hindi na nakakalakad. Diyan lang siya sa bed. Hindi na po siya makapag-ambulate. Now, you know that you should be turning the patient every two hours. Turn the patient every two hours. Oh, ngayon itong si Jose. Si Jose is sleepy tonight. Nag-turn ka sa kanya 4 p.m. Ngayong 6 p.m. nag-turn ka pinaggalitan ka pa. What would justify your action as a nurse? Bakit ko itutuloy yung turning kahit na si Jose parang gusto nang matulog? What would justify your action as a nurse? Would it be deontology or teleology? Sige na. Okay, class, it would go back to deontology. Bakit? Very good. It's your duty to do good to your patient. It's your duty to do good to your patient. Kaya kahit magalit siya, explain mo sa kanya, Jose, sorry, patient, sorry. It's really needed for you to be prevented from bed, bed sores, no? for us to prevent bed sores. So you need to justify. Okay? Always do good to your patient. Okay? That's it. Now, let's say for example that, okay? let's say for example, I, hmm, I place the side rails up. I place the side rails up for safety. I place the side rails up for safety. What justifies my action? Will it be deontology or teleology? What justifies my action? Deontology nga ba or teleology? Okay, class? Sige, parang confusing na, no? So, class, kung titingnan nyo, duty nyo talaga to. Okay? Side rails is always up for safety. Since it's part of your duty, it's part of your obligation, it's the ontology that could justify it. Okay? Don't worry. You'll be able to answer that once the situation is more specific. So, guys, alalahanin nyo lang, either dun sa dalawa, the ontology or teleology, we could not say which one is correct. No? We could not say that which one is more prevalent. We could not say if which one is more prominent. Either of these could be used in whatever setting that we will be placing our patients. So, kindly take note of that. Now, let's talk about other ethical theories. One, you have your relativism. Class, if I say relativism, pag sinabi natin relative, di ba class, dalawang terms yan usually sa English, may sinasabi tayong absolute, tapos may sinasabi din tayong relative. Now, pag sinabi ko pong relative, ibig sabihin, walang universally right or wrong. Okay? Relative. So, pag sinabi kong relative, what may be true to me, may be true to Marcelino, but it may be false for Sheila Marie. What may be true to Julia might be, might, be, might be false for Andre. What may be good for Marcelino might be bad for me. So it's relative. One can be wrong or right based on relative views. Halimbawa, ano? Halimbawa may ginawa akong act. Para kay John Maverick, I'm good. Pero para kay James Patrick, I'm bad. That could happen. Huh? That can happen. 
Okay? So there is no such thing as universal norms of right or wrong. It would actually depend on the relative views that we are having. Now, subjective relativism. Subjective relativism, more specific, right and wrong for each person are decided by themselves. What's wrong for someone may be right for someone else. Now, anong message dito sa'yo bilang nurse? You are not supposed to argue with your patient. Do not argue with your patient. Mm. Halimbawa, drug addict. Napunta sa'yo sa hospital. Huwag mong sabihan ng drug addict na yan kasi sir, kung anong ka-evil yung mga ginagawa mo sa buhay. Kung anong kademonyohan yung ginagawa mo sa buhay. For you, for us, yes, we know that drug addiction is wrong. But to the patient, it's the right thing for him to do. Okay? Eh, sir, paano po naging tama yun? Baka pwede na po ba kaming mag-drugs after ng klase mo? Guys, drugs is an indication of poor coping mechanisms. Again ha, isulat nyo dyan on the side. Drug is an indication of poor coping mechanisms. In other words, si patient natin guys, nagamit ng drugs, gumamit ng drugs, kasi wala na siyang ibang pwedeng takbuhan sa buhay. Wala na siyang ibang pwedeng gawin sa buhay. Wala na siyang ibang alam na makakatulong sa kanya sa buhay. Kaya nag-up po siya sa drugs. Okay? If here comes us as a nurse, and I will tell him, yan kasi sir, demonyo ka, nag-drugs ka. What would the patient feel? You're judging the patient. Okay? And if you would apply the principle of subjective relativism, you would not argue with your patient. Because although we know, ha, again, I would like to repeat, although we know that drug addiction is wrong, our patient has a reason. Our patient has a background. Why is he doing it? Na? Why is he doing it? So never argue with your patient. Ha? E sir, anong gagawin natin? Hayaan lang natin. Or baka sabihin natin, o oh, sige sir, mag-drugs ka na kasi subjective relativism naman. Okay? What I said is not do not argue. I did not tell you to agree with your patient. Again ha, I told you do not argue. I did not tell you to agree with your patient. So class, anong kadalasang drama natin dyan? No? Sa kadalasan sinasabi natin, I understand what you are going through, sir. I understand that you have been using drugs. I understand that you might have reasons for using the drugs. And later on, class, once naka-establish na kayo ng open communication, you could say, Sir, I do not want you to do it again. I do not want you to take the drugs again. Hindi ko sinabi na, I do not want you, sir. Pangit ka, sir. Demonyo ka, sir. What I condemned was the act and not the person himself. Okay? So you could remember that as a nerd. Tingnan niyo yung sentence na sinabi ko. Sir, I do not want you to take that drug again. I do not want you to do it again. Hindi ko sinabi na, sir, I hate you. Okay? Hindi po natin inaatake yung tao, inaatake po natin yung act na ginawa niya. Now, cultural relativism, with the word culture and relativism, basically the message there is that right and wrong depends on the society's moral guidelines. And when I say class society, your society is different from mine, different from that of our patients. Okay? Guidelines vary from place to place and from time to time. Now, halimbawa class, ano, sipin na lang natin yung mga words na kadalasan we label as bad words. Halimbawa lang, ha, G-A-G-O. Or halimbawa, yung mga P, asterisk, T-A. Di ba, kadalasan, no? If as educated individuals, as nurses, you know that we are not supposed to say these things in front of our patients because it does not reflect correct behavior. But when your patient will be doing it, don't judge again your patient because class, your patient might have been in a society, your patient might have been in an area, halimbawa, squatters area. Okay? Halimbawa, class, squatters area, the language there that they use, you will see a lot of thumbbys, you will see a lot of people talking just like that. Natural yun sa kanila eh. Para sa'yo, masama pakinggan, pero sa kanila natural yan. Now, another thing, no? maybe a more grave example of cultural relativism is this. Okay? Postpartum. Diba? You're learning MCN right now. Pag sinabi kong postpartum class, kakapanganak lang. Is it okay to take a bath after you've given birth to a child? Let's say, nanganak ngayon, ha? September 22, nanganak siya, limbawa, just today. Is it okay for the woman to take a bath within the day that she gave birth? Okay lang ba yun? Sige na. Nurses of the future, sagutin niyo ako. 
Okay lang ba maligo ako? Kasi nga, kakapanganak ko lang today. Pwede? Mm -hmm. Pwede? Oh, sabi ni Andre, pwede. How about yung iba? Nako, hindi na kayo pwedeng mag-asawa. <laughs> Ladies, hindi pa kayo pwedeng mga anak pag ganito to. Sige na, sagot lang. Keep it coming. Okay? Plus, actually, technically, pwede po silang maligo. In fact, as nurses, we are educating them to take a bath. And our purpose for telling them to take a bath is that we're preventing your puerperal infection. We're preventing your puerperal infection. Oh, sir, saan papasok si cultural relativism? Ladies and gents, no? tama po yung sabi ni Andre, reduce infection and microbial growth. Ladies and gents, there are instances, there are people, no? there are people class for from far-flung areas wherein ayaw po nilang maligo. Hindi lang ng isang araw, hindi lang ng dalawang araw, pero hindi po sila naliligo ng 14 days. Because according to their culture, magiging impure po sila once maligo po sila. Oh, anong nangyari? Nagka-puerperal infection tapos papuntang sepsis. And that is where your difficulty as a nurse would come in. Pag sinabi kong sepsis, guys, blood infection. Ha? Isipin nyo na lang class infection siya sa dugo. Yan yung sepsis. Now, dyan naman papasok yung education mo bilang nurse. Okay? You know that there's cultural relativism. And again, I would say, do not argue with your patient. But you know that you need to persistently educate your patient. Ha? So persistently educate your patient. Educate them. Ma'am, alam niyo, kailangan po talagang maligo. Nakakaiwas po yan ng infection. Maya-maya, i-remind nyo naman. Ma'am, kamusta po? Gusto niyo pong tulungan ko kayo sa pagpapaligo? Ma'am, gusto niyo po ba ng assistance natin para ma matulungan kayo? Okay? So as you can notice, hindi po tayo nag insist we do not say, ma'am, ang pangit naman ng culture nyo, you're not taking a bath. You don't say it like that because if you will be doing it, they will resist. Ha? They will resist. At kung if you can notice the words that I am using, hindi ko siya pinipilit. Okay? Tama. Unti-unti hanggang pumayag. Okay? Parang mga ano to, pang legal tricks yata to. Okay? So class, tama, tama. Okay? As you can notice, what I'm saying is that, ma'am, gusto niyo po bang tulungan ko kayo? Ma'am, mag-remind lang po sana ako, nakakaiwas ng infection yung pagpapaligo po natin. Ma'am, gusto niyo po ba ng tulong? Basta baka gusto niyo po ng tulong doon sa, sa, sa comfort room natin. Okay? Baka hindi niyo po alam kung paano mag-turn on at saka turn off. Let me know po para matulungan ko kayo. That way, class, you will be able to engage them. Okay? I can't help but notice the question, paano po, sir, pag cesarean? Guys, pag cesarean, you can take a bath also. Eh, sir, di ba may sugat yon? Class, may mga bikini cut na ngayon sa cesarean. Ha? If you're learning maternal and child nursing, you would know that there is already bikini cut when it comes to your cesarean section. So pag sinabing bikini cut class as in, pwede kang magbikini pagkatapos ng recovery mo from cesarean section. Okay? And then other than that, eh sir, paano po yung sugat kapag mabasa? Class, meron na pong covering sa sugat para hindi po siya mabasa. May mga dressing na po tayong nakakatulog. That's why as a nurse, you need to educate your patients also later. Okay? So that's cultural relativism. Or, halimbawa, class, ano? Um, alam niyo yung mga manggagamot? Um, in our case here, for example, in our locality, there are people na tinatawag na Mang Luya. Okay? Mang Luluya. Are you familiar with Luya? What's the Tagalog term ba for ginger? Ano po bang Tagalog term for ginger? May I know? Nakalimutan ko eh. Luya nga yata. Ano? Okay. Sige. Plus, so sa amin may tinatawag na Luya. Mang Luya yung tawag dyan sa kanila, guys. So these are people who would use the Luya, the ginger, and then they could go to the hospital, and then they claim to have healing powers. If you are the nurse, guys, you acknowledge that. Ha? Hindi po natin pwedeng sabihin na, ma'am, masyado pong maamoy ang luya ninyo, yung luya ninyo. Ilabas niyo po yan. Hindi po po pwede. You acknowledge them. Even though, for example, now you're working in a Catholic hospital, if there will be a Muslim preacher, if there will be a Muslim priest that would come in, I think the term is imam, Plus, you welcome them. Do not tell them na, oh, bawal kayo dito, Catholic hospital po ito, hindi po balata. Hindi po ganun. You welcome them. Okay? Because, plus, that, that goes back to your cultural relativism. For you, if you're, if you're believing that Jesus is the Savior, God is the Savior, but for them, plus, it's Allah. You respect that. Huh? You respect that. Yes, tama. You respect their rights to practice their religion. That goes back also to cultural relativism. Now, another application of this may be related to the concept introduced to you by Madeline Leninger. 
if you can recall Madeleine Leninger, Madeleine Leninger is her transcultural nursing theory. Diba? So class, tayong nandito sa Pina, when we will go abroad, we could not say that whatever we did here in the Philippines could be applied also in the US of A, could be applied also in the UK, okay? or could be applied in Japan. Halimbawa, dito may mga patouch technique tayo. Eh. Na, diba? Halimbawa, ko yung nurse, sabihin ko, ma'am, okay lang po yan. No? Ma'am, nandito po ako. May mga patouch ka dito sa arms. Pero class, kapag sa ibang culture ka, once you will touch, mind you, be careful. You might be construed to be doing sexual advancement. Okay? O halimbawa sa atin, eye contact. Pwede tayong mag-eye contact. Di ba, kadalasan nga, pagkausap mo boyfriend, girlfriend mo, gusto mong may eye contact para malaman mo na nakikinig sa'yo. Ano? Pero pag sa ibang culture, pag mag-eye contact ka, baka tingnan kang aggressive ka. Okay? You're aggressive. Don't want that. Don't, they don't want you to do that. So that goes back to your cultural relativism. Iba-iba po yung good at bad sa ating mga cultures. So you need to know the culture. Now, you also have your divine command theory. So according to them, the good actions are aligned with goodwill. Or God's will, I mean. And then bad actions are contrary to God's will. And God reveals to man His will which guides man to act. Okay, that's your divine command theory. So kung ano pong utos or ano pong ten commandments, doon po tayo nagpo-focus. Kung ano pong mandate ni God, doon po tayo nagpo-focus. But take note, the divine, God, the divine command theory is not only for Christians, but it's also applicable to all other religions. Kaya again, it goes back to the, to the saying that you need to respect each other's beliefs. Now, you have the term virtue ethics. Virtue ethics was actually started in ancient Greece with your two friends here, Plato and Aristotle. In Eastern philosophy, you have Buddhism. So Buddhism also started the virtue ethics. And then in nursing, maybe the first writings in history that we have is that of Florence Nightingale. Why? What do you mean by virtue ethics? So class, virtue ethics tells us that the moral conduct is not determined by the universal code of conduct. Okay? Wala po daw universal code of conduct, but by specific personal traits that guarantee the right choice in front of moral dilemma. You highlight the words specific personal traits. Yan po yung focus ng virtue ethics natin. Di ba pag sinabi nating virtue, halimbawa, uy, itong si Julia, ganyan yung virtue niya. Itong si Julia, loyal to. Itong si Julia, hindi to nalilate. Di ba we identify a person with their specific virtues? We are talking about their specific traits. And when we talk about virtue ethics, anong sabi ni virtue ethics? Walang rules, no? Hindi kailangan ng rules. Hindi kailangan ng listahan or lagda ng mga universal code of conduct. But what we need is that we need to have the specific traits that would guarantee that we will make the right choices. So may mga listahan ng mga virtues na nasa alinja. So let's talk about ethical virtues. So class, when we talk about ethical value, I mean, no? Okay? Plus, when I say ethical value, it's determined by the character. And when I say character, this refers to the virtue, inclination, intention that dispose the person to be ready to act ethically. Okay? In other words, halimbawa ako, I value honesty. So once plus my staff nurse would lie to me, and then I know it, mahirap pong ibalik yung trust ko. And even plus if my boss would lie to me, and then it came to my attention, hindi po madali ibalik ang trust ko because one of the virtue that I value the most is honesty. Okay? So what do we mean by this ethical value? That's my character. I value honesty. In other words, most of my decisions will be built on honesty. Halimbawa, the students that I usually fail are students who have been cheating in my class. Kasi ayaw ko talaga ng mga cheaters. Ayaw ko talaga ng mga dishonest individual. You'd rather tell me the truth rather than can decode it or tell me something good just to make me feel better. Okay? Then plus, I so believe, for example, also na, okay, the truth will be out anytime. Okay? Kahit ano pong tago po natin ng katotohanan, lalabas po ang katotohanan. Okay? So, okay, it's not wise for us to hide the truth. Okay? So in other words, kung ano po yung character ko, kung ano yung virtue ko, these are my inclinations when I'm making my decisions. Now, look at, let's look at, take a deeper look on the term character. When I say character, it's a substantive moral foundation for one's action. And a person with strong character has an imbibed emotional, intellectual, moral, and social virtue to achieve that discipline to do what is right and good. As nurses, guys, the expectation for us is for us to have strong character. Hmm? 
What do we mean by strong character? Dapat alam po natin kung ano yung tama. Okay? Emotional, intellectually, morally, and then even social. Okay? In other words, pag sinabi ko, halimbawa, no? halimbawa, friends kami ni Julia, tapos sabihan ko si Julia, Julia, alam mo, friends tayo, ako na yung magpre-prepare ng meds ng mga pasyente mo. Are you, are, are, have you already taken pharmacology, guys? Have you already taken pharmacology? Okay. Now, if I would use fundamentals and pharmacology, is it okay ba that I will prepare in behalf of Julia? Is it okay ba? Okay? Hindi. Di ba? Hindi. So if Julia, if a nurse with strong character, Julia would say, Sir, okay, okay lang, I appreciate your act, but please, I will be the one to prepare. Tapos nag-insist ako, no? Nag-insist ako. Tapos sabi, ah, hindi ako talaga mag-prepare. Then Julia, with strong character, would say, Sir, ako na po. It's my license at risk, not yours. Okay? I will be the one to prepare this. So as nurses class, we need to have that strong character. Guys, ang tinuturo po sa inyo is that you need to learn how to become assertive, but you must not be aggressive. You need to learn how to become assertive, but do not be aggressive. Halimbawa doon sa example kay Julia. Julia, hindi mo naman ako kailangang sigawan. Okay? Hindi mo kailangan na, Sir, labas na nga ako na. That's aggression. But if Julia is saying, Sir, I would like to say again, it's my license and it's my responsibility and accountability. That's being assertive. Now, plus, a person with weak character finds himself doing wrong things and doing what is harmful to him and make excuses for all of his actions. Tingnan niyo po yan, weak character. Siguro may naiisip na kayong tao doing wrong all the time, pagkatapos class doing what is harmful to him, pagkatapos class make excuses to all of his actions. Alam mo yung tao na tinignan mo pa lang sa mata, tapos tinanong anong nangyari, yung kwento sa'yo 30 minutes na. Kasi hindi lang siya nagkikwento kung anong nangyari. He's also defending himself. That is actually a trait of a guilty man. Huh? You would look at textbooks, that's a trait of a guilty man. Okay, halimbawa, tinanong lang. Okay, Gilbert, ano bang nangyari? Tapos yung pagdadadal ko, 30 minutes na halimbawa. That simply shows that I am defensive. That simply shows that I might be actually guilty of what you are accusing. And this is an example of a person with weak character. Okay? Now, let's give more examples. In the clinical setting, halimbawa class, nasa station 1 tayo. Okay? Nasa station 1 tayo. We have 10 patients. Tapos, napadalaw itong si Denise. Kasama ni Denise, dumalaw si Andre. Kasama niya itong si Aldren. Pumunta sa station natin. Sabi nila, Uy, pabaro naman ng charts, pati ng mga pasyente nyo dyan, boring kasi ng mga patients namin. Will we show the charts to our friends who are visiting us? Will we show the charts to them? As a nurse with strong character, no, you know na hindi. Kahit kaibigan pa natin sila, kahit ka-close nyo pa sila, hindi po natin pwedeng sabihin na, oh, ito yung chart, magmarites ka dyan. Hindi po pwede. Because at the end of the day, you have your moral responsibility, you have your legal responsibility to protect your patient. Yes, tama, makakasuhan ka. Eh sabihin, sir, trusted ko naman sila eh. Guys, di mo alam, baka boyfriend niya yan, or baka ex niya pa yan, or baka ex ng ex ng ex niya, kung ano man ang relationship nila, it's really best for you to keep the confidentiality of your patient. Ha? Keep the confidentiality of your patient. Now, still on virtue, plus this refers to excellence in character. This is thought of as purposive dispositions and character traits that are developed throughout life. Look at the lines, developed throughout life. Okay? So class, hindi po po pwede that for us to say na, hey, I'm a loyal man. And then you know that yesterday, five days ago, ten days ago, may mga kalibin partner ako. At halimbawa, may mga marami akong partners. Okay? And you know that I am unloyal or, or not loyal to my partners. That could not change overnight because class your virtues are developed throughout life. Okay? Kadalasan actually, guys, if you would see a person with a problem with his personality right now, psych nursing would tell you that there might have been a problem even since childhood. Okay? Kadalasan po ng personality at saka behavior natin could actually be rooted back, could actually be traced back to your childhood. Halimbawa, smoking. Halimbawa, alcohol drinking. If babalikan ko po yung sinabi ng Tito Sigmund Freud ninyo, 
isang stage po tayo nagka-problema dito. Di ba? Freud tells us there are five stages. Oral, anal, phallic, latent, and then genital. Isang stage tayo nagka-problema, guys. Bakit tayo nagsusmoking at saka alcohol drinking? The problem is actually going back to your oral stage. And if you would look at oral stage, guys, oral stage is actually from ages. Plus, your oral stage is actually from ages 0 to 1.5 years of age. Okay, tama. 0 to 1. So, that's your oral stage. Okay? So, that goes without saying that the personality that we have is actually developed throughout life. Then, when I talk about virtue class, it is praiseworthy traits of human. So when I say, oi, you are virtuous. Okay? When I say, you are virtuous. So I could say, class na, I could say na, oi, okay, mabuting tao to siya. Okay? This is praiseworthy. Okay? This is a praiseworthy person. Okay? And you take note of it. Now, this is the character of the healthcare professional. Ha? Yan po yung character ng healthcare professional. And then characters class are said to be immeasurable. And then, by the way, the major institutions that develop our virtue are your school, your social institution, and then your family. Ha? Your school, your social institution, and your family has a lot to say about your virtues. Okay? That's why, no? And that's why malaki talagang impact niya sa attitude natin at saka virtues natin. Now, personal virtues. So, personal virtues would include purity and holiness. They have religious overtones. But these are embodied also in the Hippocratic Oath. Okay? Diba, the last thing sinasabi natin, let you, as a nurse, you need to be pure. You need to be holy. Parang sinasabi, sir, kailangan ba namin maging religious? Pero class, if you would look at our history, that's embodied in the Hippocratic Oath. When I talk about Hippocratic Oath, this is the oath of nurses or doctors. Is this the oath of nurses or doctors? Hippocratic Oath, guys. Sige na. Dapat alam nyo to. History to kasi sa ethics. When I talk about Hippocrates, this goes back to Hippocrates. Is Hippocrates a nurse or a physician? Sige na. Sabihin nyo sa akin. Chat, chat. Nurse nga ba siya or physician? Pag sinabi kong Hippocratic oath, oath nga ba ito ng mga nurses or ng physician, guys? Hulaan nyo kung di nyo alam. Gusto kong malaman yung ideas nyo. Okay? So, class, this is actually for the doctors. This is actually for the physician. Ha? Nurses, this is for the physicians. This is for the physician. Pero sir, bakit nyo, pinag bakit nyo kami sinasabihan yan? E para naman sa mga doktor yan. Guys, if you can recall the history of our profession, we actually started to be slaves of doctors. Na. We actually started to be known as slaves of doctors. But that changed, of course, because of time. Now, this is also class embodied in the code of our, in our code of ethics. Ha? Nakasulat po yan sa code of ethics natin yung mga virtues na yan. Okay? Now, look at these um, lines that we find in your code of ethics. The nurse at all times would maintain standard of personal conduct which reflect well on the profession and enhance public confidence. Hmm, what does it mean? Nasa hospital ka man, nasa school ka man, dapat you should be able to follow the personal conduct of a nurse. Okay? Guys, alimbawa, the same age na. Hmm. Halimbawa, itong si Patrick Miguel. My friend na si Juan Miguel. Halimbawa, the same age kayo. Ikaw, Patrick, nurse. Itong si Juan Miguel, let's say, for example, another profession siya. Sabihin natin, businessman. Pag kayong dalawa may sinuntok na isang tao, palagay nyo sino po yung may mas malaking agrabyado. Si is it Patrick, who is a nurse, or yung kasama niyang businessman? They committed the same mistake. Okay? So, class mas malaki po yung kasalanan ng nurse. Ha? Mas malaki po yung kasalanan ni Patrick. Sorry, Patrick, ikaw pa yung na-example. Okay? Mas malaki pong kasalanan ng nurse. Okay? That goes without saying, class, there are two professions in our country that is recognized to have high moral transcendence. Okay? Again, ha? there are two professions in our country that is recognized to have high moral transcendence. These two professions are nurses and teachers. These two professions are nurses and teachers. Okay? So class, parang sabi nga namin, pabuti pa yung iba, pwedeng magwala in public. Pero kapag nurse yung magwala in public, malaking problema. Okay? So sila, pwede silang magwala in public, tayo mga nurses, hindi. Okay? Tandaan niyo po yan. Now, 
the nurse owes the same duties to self as to others, including the responsibility to preserve integrity and safety. Okay? So may duty po tayo sa sarili natin at may duty po tayo sa iba. Okay lang, sir. Lagi naman po ako masama. So, <laughs> okay, hindi naman ganoon ako. Okay. So, uh, ano nga ba ito? Nawala tuloy ako. So, the nurse owes the same duties to self as to others, including the responsibility to preserve integrity and safety. In other words, guys, may duty ka sa sarili mo, may duty ka sa iba na pangalagaan sila. Okay, you have the duty to yourself and to others to preserve integrity and safety. Halimbawa, naglalakad ka sa mall, ka-holding hands yung girlfriend mo. Pagkatapos, somebody suddenly collapse beside you. As a nurse, hindi mo duty ah, kasi nagde-date ka nga eh, kasama mo yung girlfriend mo. Okay? Or boyfriend mo. Nag-holding hands. May nag-collapse. As a nurse, do you need to respond to that? Do I need to deal with the collapse? Plus, your code of ethics tells you to do so. Your code of ethics tells you to do so. Okay? Pwede. Dapat po mag-respond po tayo dyan. Now, nurses must perform their professional duties in conformity with existing laws. Okay? In conformity of existing laws, rules, regulations, measure, and acceptable principles of moral conduct and proper decorum. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, plus, pag may duties tayo, dapat law, rules, regulations, alam natin yan. Moral conduct and proper decorum, dapat alam din po natin yan. Yes, very good for talking about the Good Samaritan law. We are protected by the Good Samaritan. Um, what do I mean kasi by proper decorum? Um, hindi po tayo nag-generalize, pero lately parang marami akong kwentong naririnig na yung mga nurses nagiging kabit. Yung mga nurses parang pumapasok na third wheel sa mga relationship. Guys, if you are a nurse, again, mas masakit po yung pataw sa inyo. Mas masakit po yung punishment sa inyo if you will be doing that. Okay? And guys, ha, if ever you will be in this situation, kindly think na what's best for yourselves. Once kasi class na pumasok ka sa something not legal, once pumasok ka class sa something that is just pleasurable but not legal, you are actually exposing yourself to more legal risk. Ha, you are exposing yourself to more legal risk. That might actually um, result to losing your license to practice. Okay? That might actually result your license. No? Now, so take a risk or lose a chance. Sige. Now, class, you have the circular virtues. So, pag sinabi natin secular virtues, sabi ni Plato, may apat na virtues dyan. Justice, temperance, then you have courage and wisdom. These virtues that would enable the nurse to be firm in facing adversity, intact ang karakter, to be kind and optimistic, and then to experience great joy in serving. So, kindly take note of the four classical Greek virtues. Justice, temperance, courage, and then wisdom. Now, I would want to talk about justice. Class, which is justice? A, I'm giving equal amount to everybody. Or B, everybody get what they deserve. Which is justice? Equal amount to everybody or everybody gets what they deserve? Okay, so class, yan pong justice, ha? Getting what we deserve. So halimbawa, ano? Sampu tayo dito. Merong, merong food, uh, program, may feeding program mula DSWD. Halimbawa, ang pamilya ni Sheila, lima sila sa pamilya. Kami halimbawa sa family ko, sampo kami. Tapos si Clarissa, lima din kaya sila sa family nila. Plus, applying the principle of justice, hindi pwede na bibigyan lang tayong lahat ng isang sakong bigas. Applying the principle of justice, dapat mas maraming bigas yung marireceive ko kasi sampo kami sa family na. That's the principle of justice, getting someone what they deserve. Okay? It does not need to be equal, okay? but it needs to be equity. Okay? There should be equity. Iba-iba po kasi ang pangangailangan ng bawat tao. If we will pursue equality, may maiiwan po. Tama. Okay? So what we do is equity and not equality. Okay? You're giving good insights. Okay, that's good. So class, ah, remember that is justice. Now temperance, hindi po pwede na tayong huling mag ah, Hindi po pwede na tayo yung unang mag -alip. Okay? Alam nyo guys, yung hugot namin sa hospital, side topic mo. Plus, minsan nung nagagalit ka na sa pasyente, pero alam mo nang ginagawa mo. Ma'am, good afternoon po. <laughs> Kamusta po sila? <laughs> pero deep inside pa lang gusto mo ng kain. <laughs> okay? So class, it's in. Tapos talagang temper mo. Halimbawa, no, in the hospital, you would encounter patients na magbabas. Okay? 
eh di magbabasa yun plus takbuhan mo yun kasi emergency yun, di ba? Kasi nag-press nga siya ng button, no? Tapos pagdating nurse, paano ba itong ayusin itong aircon? Okay? Parang sa isip ko, ma'am, nag-prepare po ako ng gamot, no? Okay? May cardiac, may cardiac problem po yung kabilang room. Baka po may mas importante kayong concern. Pero wala. Deep inside anong ginagawa mo? Ay saglit lang po, ma'am. Babalik po ako. May emergency lang. Or ma'am, ganito po yung mag-ayos ng aircon. Tapos babas yun ulit. Nurse, bakit wala pong cable itong room? <laughs> Parang minsan sa isip mo talaga, parang, alam mo, papatulan mong ganun. But plus temperance. You need to have temperance. No? So, that's part really of our work as nurses. And then class, no, baka sabihin nyo, sir, trabaho pa talaga natin yung aircon, yung TV. Guys, for you to avoid that, and for you to deal with that, I mean, not to avoid it, orient your patients. By the time na pumasok si patient, orient nyo na kagad. Okay? Plus, sabi natin, di ba, sa fundamentals at health assessment, The best way to show learning is by how would I know that my patient already knows? What's the best way that would indicate learning? Ano po yung best indication ng learning, guys? Na, return demonstration. So anong gagawin nyo? Ma'am, ganito po yung mag ng TV. Sige, ma'am, pwede po natin subukan. Ma'am, ganito po mag-transfer ng channel. Ma'am, subukan po natin. Ma'am, ganito po mag ng aircon. Subukan nga po natin. Gawin nyo guys, no? gawin nyo yung ganon. I tell you, makakatipid kayo ng oras sa buong admission ng pasyente ninyo. Okay? Now, religious virtues. Tinawag ng religious, no? So, Roman Catholic class, no? They affirm the Greek and Christian virtues. The seven virtues there, you have prudence, justice, temperance, fortitude, faith, hope, and love. Okay? It all goes back to those. But then the three Pauline virtues are the focus of the Protestants. And that is faith, hope, and love. Okay, that is faith, hope, and love. Kaya class, no, kapag nasa mga protestant hospitals kayo, kadalasan class, they talk really about hope. No? They talk really about hope. And they would tell you, ma'am, everything will be okay. Let's place it on the hand of God. Okay? Kadalasan yan talaga yung motto ng mga prayers nila. So, tandaan nyo yan, na faith, hope, and love. Uh, if you're a Catholic, I think you can memorize this. But for those who are not, I think you can stick with the three virtues, the three Pauline virtues by Paul, St. Paul. So you have your faith, hope, and love. Okay? So, class sa hospital, I know, later on when you will become third year, fourth year students, it would come to your attention that ano po yung pinaprioritize natin? I want you to answer this. Ano pinaprioritize natin? Is it the physical needs of our patient or the spiritual needs of our patient? Ano po yung priority? Physical po or spiritual? Sige na, anong mas priority ko sa dalawa? Physical nga ba or spiritual? Sagutin po natin, gusto kong malaman kung ano pong para sa inyo yung priority. Because that is also an ethical question. Okay? So class, hopefully hindi kayo nagdalawang isip. Ha? Okay? Huwag niyong sabihin, sir, Catholic school tayo or sir, Christian institution tayo. Parang ang sama naman sabihin na uunahin natin yung physical. Guys, ang pinaghuhugutan po natin yan is ang sinulat ni Abraham Maslow. If you would look at Maslow, Maslow is telling us the hierarchy of needs. If you are dealing with your patient in the hospital setting, you first deal class with the physiologic needs of your patient before you would proceed with the other needs of your patient. Okay? So class, physical muna bago spiritual. In other words, pag gusto ng patient mo mag-prayer, pero if your patient is having difficulty of breathing, anong uunahin pong address? Ang prayer time ni patient or ang difficulty of breathing ni patient? Anong uunahin pong i-address? ang prayer time o yung breathing ni patient. Guys, unahin mo yung breathing ni patient. Okay? Baka yung prayer nyo po mamaya is prayer for internal rest na. Ha? Baka pagkatapos ng prayer nyo mamaya, natigok na yung pasyente kasi sa kakapray. <laughs> I don't want to sound philosophical there, but I hope you're getting the point. Okay? But then, class, ha? in the hospital setting, by experience to. Guys, iba ang impact ng spiritual care sa patient. Okay? Pero ganito guys, mahirap kasi when you talk about spiritual care, you would want to pray with the patient, you would want to talk about the belief of the patient. Maganda po yung impact. By my experience, maganda talaga yung impact. Pero guys, very time consuming siya. Bakit sir, pero yung sinasabi nyo? Class, pero siya. Kasi yung nangyayari is that, no? yung nangyayari is that, yung nurses, wala tayong masadong time for those activities. Halimbawa, 12 patients yung pinangangalagaan mo tapos magpe-prayer time ka pa doon sa isa. 
So, kadalasan yun yung talents ng nurses na nai-encounter. So, guys, payo ko sa inyo later on kung kayo na yung sa practice. Guys, kahit isang pasyente lang per day, try nyo mag-spiritual care. Kahit isang pasyente lang per day, try nyo mag-spiritual care. Gawin nyo in 10 to 15 minutes, you'll be able to do it. And once you have your duties na pala, student nurses, try to do it. Pray with your patient and then talk to your patient about their belief. It helps them a lot. Now, class, you also have what you refer to as your virtue-based nursing model. So, class, pag sinabi po natin nursing model, the model is actually attempting to explain the relationship of the phenomenon. Okay, class, the purpose of your nursing model is to explain the relationship of concepts and phenomena. Oh, class, itong model na sinasabi natin, the moral ground model, okay, class, the moral ground model, Okay, is actually akin no? or actually based on the Eightfold Path of Buddhism. Okay? So, right mindfulness, right view, right concentration, right effort, right livelihood, uh, right livelihood, right action, right interpretation. Those are what is uh, being discussed in your Eightfold Path of Buddhism. So, class, ano pong ibig sabihin yan? If we will apply that to nursing, I could not just say that you are a good nurse because you are intelligent. Obvious po yun, hindi lang po ganun. Dapat po tama po yung effort, dapat tama ang livelihood, dapat tamang pag-iisip po tayo. Kasi you can say that you are intelligent, but at the end of the day, iba pala yung focus mo sa buhay. Iba pala yung pagagamitan mo ng intelligence mo. So I could not say that you will become an effective nurse. Ha? Guys, kahit cliche man pakinggan, nursing is bound to caring. Nursing is a caring profession. Hindi po siya profession ng patalinuhan lamang. Pero it's a profession of who's be able to care to their patients in times that their patient needs you. Now, these are class the activities and attitude that develop nurses intellectual and moral values. One class insight, the term there is Sophia. Now, class insight is actually translated to wisdom. That's Sophia. Uh, it is the ability to think well about the nature of the world. And it involves careful deliberation of the universal truth. Plus, ang keywords po natin, wisdom. Then, careful deliberation of universal truth. Class, pag sinabi po nating wisdom, hindi po tayo basta-basta naniniwala sa mga sabi-sabi lamang. Halimbawa, sa example ko kanina, di ba? Sinabing, uy, uminom ka ng kapsulang ito, makukuha yung tumor mo. Okay? Pagkatapos, ikaw naman nurse, ay talaga, may kapsula para sa tumor, i-recommend ko kaya kay patient. Guys, wisdom-wisdom naman pag may time, di ba? Eh, kahit konting wisdom lang. You know as a nurse that those things have no approved therapeutic claims and you could not just recommend it to your patient without so. Ha, hindi pwede. Pharmacology would tell you. That's wisdom. Okay? Or for example, guys, you have 10 patients. You would know who to prioritize. You know, class, na kahit yung isa mong pasyente sumisigaw, uunahin mo yung pasyente mo, class, na nakaganito, tapos na mamawis, tapos na lalaming. Kasi alam mong nurse, your wisdom is telling you na that is heart problem. That is heart attack that is happening to my patient. Okay? So those are your wisdom. You, you carefully deliberate the truth that are being presented to you. Next, guys, you have practical wisdom. Okay? Another term for that is your pronesis. That stands for prudence. It is the capability to consider the mode of action in order to deliver change, especially class to enhance the quality of life. Kadalasan in legalities, we would say you need to be prudent. Okay, you need to be prudent. Okay, ah, wait lang, bakit tayo sumula? Class sa legalities, sinasabi, kailangan po natin maging prudent. Okay? Now, um, your classmate earlier remind us, reminded us of good Samaritan law. The good Samaritan law, guys, no? halimbawa dun sa mall, ka-holding hands mo si girlfriend, pero class may nag -collapse. The good Samaritan law would be able to protect you if you did what a prudent nurse would have done. Now, the term there still is prudent. Okay? Halimbawa, class, binitawan ko yung hands ng girlfriend ko, tapos nag-address ako dun. Tapos, hala, kasi magaling akong nurse. Di pa CPR, CPR pa ako, di ba? Kasi nga, alam ko talaga kung anong ginagawa ko. Tapos it turns out, hindi naman pala CPR yung kailangan ng pasyente. May pulso po yung pasyente, so hindi niya kailangan ng CPR. So class, the good Samaritan law would not be able to protect you. Okay? The good Samaritan law would be able to protect you only if you did what a prudent nurse could have done. Eh, sir, ano yung prudent? 
Plus, in other words, you did it within standard. Okay, you did it within standards. You use your insight to have the reasoning, applying intellectual virtue. Ginamit niyo po yung utak niyo. Ginamit niyo po yung standards. Okay? You analyze the situation first before plus you did something to your patient. In other words, what do you call that process? Ano nga ba yung tawag natin class sa ADPIE? What do you call this process? What do you call that process class na may ADPIE? What did you apply to your patient? Yeah, simply class your nursing process. So whatever you will be doing to your patient, nursing process muna. So dun sa collapse na sinasabi ko, bago ka mag-CPR, nurse, mag-assess ka muna, gising ba, may pulso ba. Okay? That will be able to guide you because it tells you assess first before you would intervene. This would help you to have prudence. Okay? This would help you to have prudence. Now, the next thing there is that choice. Class choice is pro high risk. Morality is achieved through choice, facilitated by insight, practical wisdom, and evenness of emotional state. So it should be your choice, talaga. Okay. In other words, no. Halimbawa, if you will, if you will encounter somebody who has been, um, um, uh, who has been, uh, dishonest, dapat po maging choice niya. Dapat sabihin niya na, oi, magbabago na ako. I need to start now. Or a very good example would be somebody who is smoking. Okay? Diba somebody who is smoking, anong sasabihin? Mag-stop na ako kasi inuubo ako. After two days na wala yung ubo. Sige, hit-hit na naman ang sigarilyo. Na-notice nyo yun? Kung may kakilala kayong smoker, diba they find it really difficult for them to change. Now class, this topic tells you that it needs to be their choice. That's why as nurses, we don't, we don't usually tell them na, Uy sir, pigilan nyo na po yung pag, pigilan nyo yung smoking. Kadalasan class, initial approach natin dyan is, Sir, with that situation, what do you think is the best thing to be done? Tapos pag sabihin nila na, siguro mas mabuti kapag mag-stop na ako. Sir, what do you mean by stopping? Eh, dapat class, it should come from them. Because class, this will become their virtues later on. Once it is their choice, there is very high likelihood that it will become successful later on. Ha? Once naging choice po nila, magiging successful po nila. Now, the goal or telos. Class, your goal or telos, oh, siguro maririmayin ko yun ito, telos. This goes back to your teleology. And then if you would look at it, goal. Di ba pag sinabi kong goal, nandun po siya sa end. So class, this is somehow related to your teleology. Now class, your goal or telos embodies personal professional excellence in nursing, characterized as active happiness and well-being, consistent with enlightening awareness of the causes of moral suffering, as well as the awareness of the sacredness of the day-to-day -day moral nature of nurses' work. Sir, ano po yung binasa ninyo? Guys, basically, it tells us no, that your goal as a nurse okay, is that every day is considered to be sacred. And then class, every day is a moral nature of the nurse's work. Huh? Every day class, you talk about morality, you deal about morality. You could not, you could not have it today and then say na, Oy, that's, uh, wala akong i-deal na ethical issues today. Malabo pong mangyari yan. Every day po, meron po talaga tayong ethical issues na ma-encounter. Even how easy or how difficult it is, it's part of your day. Uh, so kindly of take note of that. Now, there are different virtues of the healthcare provider. I'll just give you keywords for you to remember. Plus fidelity, faithful. Ha? Faithful. In other words, if you have an agreement to take care of your patients, five patients today, you will be taking care of these five patients. Hindi mo sila iiwan. Sa example ko kanina, kahit pa magkasakit ang mother, kahit pa magkasakit ang family member, you are faithful to your commitment to your patients. That's fidelity. ha? Huh? Be faithful. Guys, kayo din. In, in your relationships, you need to be faithful. ha? Huh? Wala pong patutunguhan yung mga unfaithful relationships. ha? Huh? Now, honesty. Pag sinabi natin honesty, hindi po tayo nagsisinungaling. Not cheating, not stealing, free of deceit, synonymous with sincerity, integrity, truthfulness, uprightness. Guys, honesty. Yeah, that's self-explanatory. Oh, as nurses, guys, when you commit a medication error, your license will be at risk. Okay? When you commit a medication error, your license will be at risk. Now, nag-commit ka ng error, halimbawa. Registered nurse ka na today. Nag-commit ka ng error. 
Will you tell the truth or will you hide it? Will you tell the truth or will you hide it? Sige na, sagutin niyo ako para malaman natin kung anong values natin. You committed a medication error. What would you do? Yung iba nag-iisip siguro, Sir, if I will tell the truth, baka mawawala yung license ko. Plus, I said that if you will, if you have committed a medication error, if you have committed a medication error, your license may be at risk. May. Okay? Pero plus, once you tell the truth, no? nag-commit ka ng medication error, once plus you tell the truth, pwede pa po nating makorekt yung ginawa ninyo. We can do corrections. Yes, we can do amendments. We can do something to help your patients. But once you hide it, wala. Hmm. Okay? Baka mamamatay na yung pasyente natin. Baka mamatay yung pasyente natin sa complications because you are not able to say. Okay? So that's why you are reminded to be honest. Ha? Huh? Huwag kayong matakot dun sa sinabi ko na mawawala yung lisensya nyo. Mas mawawala yung lisensya nyo if something bad happened to the patient and then you were not able to tell them. Okay? So class, you can tell the patient actually, even the patient, the doc, and even your head nurse. You can tell them about it.